Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Tim and on behalf of Pastor Katie and our entire vision and council, we're just really thankful that you're with us this morning and able to share this time of worship together. Again, we need to update you just a little bit before we start on some of our plans for upcoming weeks. Uh, first and foremost, this week, again, we're online only. And then next Sunday on September 13, it's our hope to be able to add back our uh, parking lot worship service in person at 9 a.m. with communion. So just a reminder about that. Again, if the COVID numbers continue to decline uh, decently, that's our hope then to also be able to add back um, uh, the chance to gather on the lawn for in-person worship at 9 o'clock the following Sunday, the 20th. So again, uh, this Sunday online, the 13th parking lot plus online, the 20th, we hope to add back that canopy worship. Either way, we hope you can be with us no matter how it is that you're worshiping. We hope and pray that again, this is a worship that could be a gift of us celebrating the connection, the community that you and I have together in Christ. And also that we could again, just be encouraged by this, this time together. It might send us out to once again be bold, to be the hands and the feet, the voice of Christ at work in our community and in our world. We also want to remind you quickly about some of the special events coming up at Holy Trinity this month, along with this Wednesday when we have the start of Confirmation Ministry, the start of our high school ministry on Wednesday evening, both virtually and in person. Again, uh, later this month, the Club 56 event for our fifth and sixth graders and uh, a family experience event for, for Sunday school youth and their families on Sunday the 27th after worship. So again, mark your calendars for those coming experiences. We hope you can be a part of that. We have a blood drive coming up on the 19th. We also want to remind you that uh, this is an especially difficult time for just so many of us, for all of us together, that the toll that these events going on around the world are taking on us, on our own mental health especially, are truly unprecedented. And in that respect, I think we're called to be fully attentive to, again, not only our own health, our own needs, but, but those of our neighbors being present for them in any way that we're able to do, in any way, shape, or form that you and I can, can do to serve together. So we're blessed here at Holy Trinity that we have a team who are passionate about that issue. And we've created a very special opportunity for all of us to be able to participate in safely and to, again, glean some insight. It takes place outdoors on Sunday, September 20th, after worship. And we're going to gather to hear personal stories from some special guests who are making a special effort to be in our midst to learn more about suicide awareness. It's 1015. You can take place on the lawn or in your car. Either way, we'd really love for you to be a part of that. I'm really encouraged about that event. I'm excited about that opportunity. And I really hope you'll take seriously the chance to take advantage of that and be a part of it. So let's now take a moment to center ourselves for our purpose for the morning, a moment of quiet to just ready ourselves to open up to the gifts we have today to God. Open up our hearts, open up our minds, our souls to God in worship. And as we do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's now take just a moment to begin our worship with an opening song.
to our worship. Join me in prayer, would you? God, it's a difficult season and a season when we are so much in need of your word and your hope and your promise. So come to us again today as you have long promised to do. Be present wherever two or three are gathered virtually, online, in person, in your presence. And as you come to us again today, again, bless us, feed us with your word and with your chance to share the peace with each other and just to know and feel again that you are indeed a real hope and promise in this time of trouble. So come to us today, God, and each day we are given in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Katie, and this is our beloved Gus. Gus has joined me week after week to share a message, and this week it's Gus sharing his message. I'm going to speak for him. Gus this week barked, ran around, got very huffy with me, and paced back and forth. Why? Well, this week we had 32 trees removed from the property. 32 trees that had put, torpedoed into the house or were on the house or had snapped along fence lines. 32 huge, beautiful trees. There were a lot of people here to work that had come from out of state and and he could smell and sniff and he was worried about our safety. So what did he do? He barked, he barked and he barked. I got mad at Gus. I would tell him to stop barking. I would get mad and, and say to him, now stop, just settle down. But see, he was doing his job. He was being what his brain had been taught to do to protect. He was being obedient. Sometimes we misunderstand obedience. I misunderstood what Gus was doing. Gus was showing me love. Gus was showing me love above the rules. He was going to give his life to protect me. Once he understood what was going on, he became friends with the workers and, and things quieted down. But I had to show him that we were safe. I had to teach him the rules. I had to remind him that things had changed here and he's been loving me and showing me love all week long. I want to read this passage to you. This is Psalm 119. It goes like this. God, teach me the lessons for living so I can stay the course. Give me insight so I can do what you tell me my whole life long. I want to have an obedient response. Guide me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling this freeway. Give me a bent for your words of wisdom and not for piling up loot. Divert my eyes from toys and trinkets and invigorate me on the pilgrim way. Oh, affirm your promises to me. Promises made to all who fear you. Deflect the harsh words of my critics. But what you say is always so good. See how hungry I am for your counsel. Preserve my life through your righteous ways. Gus was being obedient. He was showing me them that obedience, love, that's the godly way. The rules, the sitting, the standing, doing what I ask, Gus was showing me to go above all of that, to protect me, to give his life. I want to ask you this week, how can you show love with all that's going on in the world right now, with the flu, the virus, everything else? What's one way you can say, I love you? Now, Gus can't tell me he loves me. But when I got really teary-eyed watching the trees get cut down, he came and sat in my lap and let me just fall into his fur and cry. This big old guy letting me cry in his fur, it was love. What can you do this week? Can you say, I love you? Somebody who longs to know and hear it? Gus, I love you, and I'm thankful that this week 
you showed me love. I challenge you this week, do one thing or say the words, I love you to the people you love. Well, it's time to pray. When I pray, I like to fold my hands because we're talking to God. I like to bow my head because this is important. And you know what I like to do? I like to close my eyes so I'm not thinking, but I'm just listening. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for loving us, for giving us forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Katie. It is good to spend this time together. I miss just spending time with you and just being in a moment with you. So let's sit with this one. Let's put aside all of our distractions and just fully engaged in the here and now. And before we do so, let's just pray. Let's listen for God to move with us. Will you pray with me? Will you join me, please? O oh God of all creation, you are indeed our God and we are your people. And whatever is on our minds, will you bring us peace? Whatever celebrations are in our hearts, will you dance with us? And Lord, wherever we are hurt, will you heal us, renew us, restore us? Lord, as we have gathered in this place and time in all oh, different situations, will you just let us know that we are still one we are one people, loved by you, our one God. Lord, may the message today, may the words that are spoken, be the words you intend your listeners to hear, and in hearing together we will share. We pray this in all things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to share a story. And as I share my story, I'm going to invite you to have your own story, to, to have it ready, to, to share, or maybe it's on your mind as I talk about mine. Mine is going to unfold, unfold like a storytelling time. So hang in there with me. They showed up in trucks. They were hauling cranes, big vehicles with buckets hanging from them, backhoes, skid loaders, and one truck was simply full of chainsaws gas cans, rakes. It was almost like the circus had come to town as the length of the parade of the vehicles and our reception of thankfulness, the welcomeness that we felt with each person as they came, uh, under my, underscored that they had come to this dreaded scene where an unpredicted storm had caused tree after tree to snap, twist, cut loose, and fall. As they unloaded their cars, they took up their gear and they gathered in the middle of the yard and took their first walkabout. As they, as trained storm chasers, they had seen a thing or two, and but even they were impressed. And they gave pause. They gave pause to the job ahead. They gave pause to what they had seen as creation and now in need of being dismantled. I thank them that they gave pause to the leaves, the trees, the tree trunks of trees that were over a hundred years old that had been brought to a sudden end when the winds came and were sustained at 130 to 145 miles an hour. In less than an hour, these beautiful 100 year old trees, tree after tree after tree were done. The team, filled with all sorts of people, with all sorts of their own life stories. They would um, share those life stories along the way. But this team just stood. They stood in the center of the family farm. And they looked around. With tears in my eyes, I welcomed them. I had wished that we had met in different circumstances. I wish they had seen the place when it was so lush and beautiful and green. I wish they had seen the crops as the corn had stood up and now crushed and, and withered away. I wish they had seen the beauty of what was all around. And honestly, as they walked around, they nodded and, and they shared in my grief. And they just took a moment to let me be alongside them. See, I had interviewed 13 different companies to take down the trees at my mother's home next door to my own. And somehow together, somehow it came together as a match. 
it wouldn't take long that I realized that they would be a part of the blessing of my life. And I hope their journey, I was a blessing to them. Together, our blessing being infused into one another's stories. Within the first hour, each individual was tackling a specific problem to get the trees down or off my childhood home. They didn't even tackle what was in the woods. See, there was so much more. What they dealt with was the immediate crisis of the trees on the home, in the yard, on the fence, over the fence. These 70 foot long high trees, 70 foot high trees had been crushed, snapped. And in this specific um, mess, one tree laid this way on top of two trees that laid this way with another hanging and dangling in the back, all swaying in a light breeze. They would down a tree and quickly haul it away. Soon the pile of debris began and eventually it covered a half an acre of land stacked 12 to 20 feet high. In the midst of this circus, I kept hearing this message of hope. It came from the song that would keep playing in my head over and over again. It's called The Blessing. And it goes uh, somewhat like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's favor be upon you for this generation to your children and to their children's children. God is for you, with you, on your side. Amen, amen, amen. I held on to that song as it continued to play over and over in my head. Pause. I mean, seriously pause right now right in the here and now, pause and ask yourself, what's your story in the past weeks, months, years? What's rolling around right now in your head that you just want to share? And what message of hope is holding it all together for you? I want to take a moment. I mean, really take a moment. I want to take stock. I, I want to ask, your, ask you to, to look around and say, what have I witnessed this past week that I need to share? That's worthy of taking note of just giving it some breath. What celebrations, what reunions, what laughter, what joy has you smiling just thinking about it? Or maybe what fear, worry, anxiety, loneliness, sickness, or whatever's going on in your life, what is it that's on your mind right now? I have been reminded again and again that for each of us, when we are telling our story, we do not need to worry about the stories of others. Our stories do not diminish someone else's story, nor does, does another story need to diminish our own. It's our story. We do not need to be hushed. We need to hear it to speak it, even if we're the only one who listens. As I grieved this past week, one person invited me, Katie, when no one's looking, go hold the trees and cry. I would touch each one because see, as the sap comes out of them, it's as if they are weeping. Now to some, it's just trees and the trees are in the way, but these are the trees that witness life and give life, hold on to life, nurture life. Now you don't have to play Iowa nice. You don't have to feel like your story or my story is not as important as someone else's. I'm not asking you to, to feel bad. I'm sharing where I was and where I've been. I'm not asking you to do anything but listen. I think that's what God was encouraging us in the scriptures time and time again this very week in the psalm and in the gospel. We listen. We listen to one another and even more as the things get crazier and crazier, we listen more and more with intentionality, not trying to solve what the story is telling us, but instead to listen as the story unfolds. We give dignity to all stories. We give dignity to all celebrations. We give dignity to the stories of betrayal, brokenness, and survival because we listen. And we give pause to those who need to experience that in the hearing their story, they feel valued. We listen to one another. And as we do so, 
We are living a life, life lesson. We are staying on the course. And we listen as God is again reminding each of us what it means to be faithful and what it means to have faith in the promise that God has given to each of us. Back to this team that showed up to our house. Um, I stood and watched. I didn't stand and watch like an employer. I stood and watched in awe. Their skill, their energy, the way they had to trust one another. I mean, you are on a, a someone down here below holding on the crane and you're 70 feet up and they would have a chainsaw on their back and they'd flip it around. And the people below, these big branches would fall and, and they all seemed to know this dance that they were doing together. And yes, they had little microphones in their, in their headgear, but they were talking nonstop, working nonstop, and I was in awe of what they were doing. I had been stuck for so many days, not knowing how to move forward with the disaster in front of me, and they did. And I watched in awe. I watched what was not just happening to the trees, but was happening to myself in our lives together. Each time, each time a tree would fall, each time we would pause and watch its magnificence just crash to the ground. Well, time and time again, I had opportunities to meet each of the team members and I got to know them and hear their stories of how they ended up in Marion, Iowa, cleaning up trees. This team consisted of folks who work hard. Surely they are storm chasers. They would say the same thing. Praise the Lord, they came to the storm that had happened in my hometown, in my own home. This team consisted of folks that not only work hard, they are raising families. In fact, I will never forget the young son who came one day and watched his father climb the toughest tree. I mean, the highest one. I mean, this one was packed down on my mom's um, house and roof. And he watched and he was so proud of his dad as he cut limb after limb after limb down. And I watched another man who was a young father and his wife came and show, they are staying together at a local hotel, but they were in need of diapers and formula. And he was worried that he had to take some time to go out and go shopping for her. And would this get in the way of the work he was doing? The owners of the company shared their own stories of how they've had to pull this team together. They spoke in depth of the importance to build a team and what it means to be community. They humbly spoke as masters of their trade and they spoke with a dignity for their coworkers. They talked about the importance of building one another up. They talked about how they need to allow their members independence, but also to be intertwined with one another. They talked about how they must work alongside of one another and do so in their best areas as well as their weakest. It was like listening to a guest speaker at a leadership conference. I took pause. I took note. Now I want you to know they weren't just speakers. They would get a chainsaw out too and along with the rest of the team, restore the, the land. Then what appeared to be effortlessness. Together, we engaged in dialogue after dialogue. As, a, as strangers to the property where I have lived most of my life, we engaged in dialogue in politics, religion, race. We engaged and talked about the importance, first of all, about the ability to speak to one another, to listen to one another and not merely try to convince one another of what was on our minds. These strangers had quickly become friends. We talked about politics, yes. We talked about religion, yes. I may have waited a day or two before I told them I was a pastor. I didn't want to scare them off. I was enjoying our time together, their honesty and their willingness to be there for me. We talked not only race, we talked about voting. 
We talked about the economy. We talked about family. We talked about the hurt that is caused by addiction and violence in the home. We talked about sin. We may not have used that word, but we talked about brokenness. Brokenness that is seems to be so heavy you can't breathe. We talked about the sin and, and we talked about what it's like when we're with one another. You know, the people who do not bring out the best in us. The people that we know we can't trust yet. We find ourselves spending time with them. We talked about that. We talked about friendships that get damaged and friendships that lean in for us, friendships that hold us close. We talked about the importance of community, of family. We talked about what it means to be a person who is living a legacy life, meaning not to be remembered for the greatness of who you are, but to be a legacy leader means that you will raise a family on a foundation that is built up for generation upon generation upon generation. Legacy, legacy leaders in the home mean that they have a, a message to share, a forever message. And we hear that in today's scripture. Hear this message in the thick of all that's going on in your story and mine. We hear this message that happened thousands of years ago in Psalm 119. We hear God, the psalmist writes, hey God, teach me lessons for living so I can stay the course. In Matthew, we hear, Lord, forgive me. Teach me how to forgive one another. Teach me how many times, God, I am to forgive. And God responding with, first you are forgiven. Forgive one another. That's how this works. We then go in back to our psalm. The writer of the psalm asks God to speak words of hope, love, and faithfulness so that he or she could and would remain faithful. In Matthew, Jesus speaks, hey, listen to one another, forgive one another, build one another up, care for one another, <laughs> care for the stranger, the friend, and be faithful. The point of the psalm this week, God is with you and I always. The point of the gospel this week isn't about a law of mathematics on how many times to forgive. The point is that we are forgiven by God in each and every heartbeat. Hear me say that again. The point isn't about how many times to forgive. The point is that we are forgiven and we are to forgive one another. We are to forgive one another as a neighbor, as a stranger, and a friend. And this is our promise, that not by what we have done, but what God does in us, that we experience mercy, a forever mercy. What hope do you need to hear today? What message of hope are you aching and longing to hear in this moment? I'm going to share with you once again, God is with me and God is with you. How do we know? See, storm after storm, crisis after crisis, celebration after celebration, generation upon generation, it has been proclaimed as true that God's gift of love and mercy through Jesus Christ is God's forever promise for all creation, and it is our promise in the here and this very time now. And we lean into these teachable moments, these stories, so that we will indeed stay strong. We lean into these te teachable moments so that our hearts will be open, not only open to God, but open to one another. We lean into these teachable moments to hear the message that we are indeed forgiven. And it is our purpose to love one another and forgive one another as we have been forgiven. Lord, forgive me as I have forgiven others. We lean into these teachable moments to hear we were made out of love to be loved and to love one another. I say that often, but I want to say it again. We were made out of love to be loved, to love one another. Someone in your life needs to hear that message right now. This message of hope, 
I'm going to invite you. Get your phone out and text them and say, you are loved. Someone did that for me recently. In the midst of um, silence, I, I know that he's a farmer and I, he sent me a note and I can almost always tell that somehow when he was milking cows, he thought of me and he said, hey, in my moment of, of devotion with God, in my moment of silence, in my moment of farming, in my moment where I'm looking at the fields, in my moment when I'm looking at the skies, I'm gonna reach out and call Katie and let her know she is forgiven and loved. That message held me for days. Who needs to hear from you right now that you believe that your faith in God can be shared with those who ache and need to know? You and I are forgiven. You and I are loved. And you and I are safe. And you and I are indeed God's beloved children. We take rest in that. We fill that promise as the psalm and the gospel shared with us today. But it doesn't stop there. We are to share that good news with others. I challenge you to share a message of hope today with someone who aches just like you just like me, to know we are not alone, that our stories matter, that laughter is important, and that forgiveness is always. Will you pray with me, please? O oh God of all creation, we continue to come to you in the here and now, and we ask, O oh God, that you again remind us that you dwell in our every moment, in our every heartbeat. Lord, as we have gathered and heard this message, may we take the risk to share it, to do more than like it on Facebook, but to live it. And in doing so, reach out to someone right now who needs to know they are loved, forgiven forever. Thank you, God, for loving us first, giving us the gift of everlasting love through your Savior through your Son, Jesus Christ, and inspiring us, encouraging us, and commanding us to love one another. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
sharing of God's word today. Let's join our hearts together in prayer for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for that matter, for one another, for our communities of faith here in Johnson County, and for all of our partner ministries across the state, across the Senate, across the world. We pray for one another then, and for the entire world and all of their diverse needs. Let's join our hearts together, shall we? God, you have chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith. We pray that your church would continue to be a voice for the poor, to act on their behalf with dignity and without fear of compromise. And Lord, you've heard the pleas of those who loved a daughter or a young man. We ask today that you'd open our hearts as well, grant peace and reform from Kenosha to North Liberty, and move our hearts and those of this world's leaders to to quiet the violence that plagues so many for so long. Help us to alleviate human suffering, to give dignity to all peoples as we are able. We pray too, God, for those continuing to clean up and recover and rebuild from the derecho storm in Lynn County, from, from the hurricane in Louisiana, from the fires out west. Give them the resources, the help, the encouragement they need to so many in this difficult and, and vulnerable time. And Father, what good is it if we say we have faith, but we have no evidence of responding to your gift with our works of love as we begin this new program year with confirmation and youth ministry beginning. We pray that you'd urge all of us, young and old, working and unemployed, experienced or not, to deepen our journeys of faith by sharing together in opportunities for spiritual growth, for greater service in God's name through this, our congregation. Lord, be with those who've been called to teach and lead and facilitate such opportunities that they too might grow in faith, might grow in their own confidence, their own familiarity with your own history of grace, and may their own faith journeys be fed in the process, in the context of serving individually or together. Merciful God, we know that there are many among us, many in our community who are sick or suffering, or again, just praying for healing today. We pray especially for those recovering from injury, those in cancer treatment, and all who are homebound or in rehabilitation, those wrestling with mental illness, and all those that we name before you in our hearts. That they too would today feel your love for them, your presence with them in their own respective circumstances. And God, just for all the many other things that we, we pray for today or ought to be praying for as we share those petitions, again, that may be only known in our hearts. Hear us indeed, Lord, then, as we offer these up to your mercy, as we, you ask, we ask that you give us what we need to serve you faithfully, to serve our neighbor generously. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We recall that after his resurrection, after they felt like they'd gone from having no hope to having an amazing sign in their midst of the grace that was theirs, the hope that was theirs, Jesus stood among those first disciples who he came to greet and offered them the gift of his peace. We need that peace today. Oh, so much. 
let's share both a sign and a word of God's peace, of Christ's peace, with those around us today. Hey, thanks again for joining us for worship today. We're really glad that you've been here. We hope this has been a blessing to you on your journey of faith this week. Just a reminder again to uh, don't forget about what's coming up this Wednesday with confirmation and youth ministry, what's coming up with a chance to sign up for the blood drive, blood drive, a chance to be part of our coming mental health event. So again, all those things happening and so much more. Check the website, check the voicemail if you need to at church. 
and check the e-blasts. All those will help you keep track of what's happening. Let's go now in peace to love, to live, and to share Christ. Thanks be to God.